Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for being on today. We got several we are letting in, so it'll just be one second. Um, if you can and you are able to, I would love for you to turn your cameras on so I can see you guys and interact with you. Matt, thank you. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt, for having your camera on. <laughs> yeah, I, I taught enough during the pandemic, so I know exactly how it feels. <laughs> Thank you. It makes a huge difference. Scott, what's up? Long time no see. Okay, guys. Thanks for being on. Um, we are going to do an industry update part five, and I have a lot to share. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get through everything Um as quickly as I wanted to and that I won't miss anything. Uh, let's see, hold on one second and let me start really quickly. We are recording, so we'll send it out for you if you missed. Um, if you have missed any of the other four that we've done the last four months, you can go and find them on the One Team YouTube channel. And Caitlin or Abby, if y'all could put that in the chat, that would be awesome, pretty please. And um, some of the numbers obviously change as I get them updated every month. I just so you guys know, I take this straight from Gary Keller. Um, it's important to me to be able to get it back out to our agents and to anybody who wants to join. Um, and so these are all the stats from Gary and from KWRI. So um, why are you here today? To make you the local economist. Your clients deserve your knowledge. Um, you don't want to be one of the ones who waits. You want to be proactive, not reactive. And I want to give you good perspective, knowledge, and power. Um, and that's what data and stats do. We heard a lot this year at the Mega Agent Camp around becoming a market, market local market expert. Gary's talked a lot about that. Um, a lot of top leaders are talking about that. And I just want to make sure that you guys are very well aware of how to do that too, because Gary always says the market share you lose in a shift, you will never get back. Um, but the market share that you gain in a shift, you will always get. This is a funny picture, and I shared this with you guys last time, um, but I wanted to make sure that you guys saw um, or understood the perspective, and I actually took this from, I think, Dave Ramsey on his last yeah. live that he did, but this is a picture uh, when Linda McKissick and I went fishing in West Virginia, and they tell you, I didn't do a good job, but they tell you a certain way of how to hold a fish so that it looks huge <laughs> compared to what the fish really is when you go fishing like this and when you take um, your picture, and this was the first time I'd ever been fly fishing, and I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. And then I loved it. Absolutely loved it. But the, the reason why I want to share this with you is because perspective actually is very important. You really, this fish looks a lot bigger than what it actually was that I caught, but perspective gives you hope and it should come from data experience. And of course, um, using the past as a predictor. And with data, that is the very, very best way to be able to do that. So Josh Shepler in the house. So uh, many of you saw what this is. Um, this is the new kind of tagline of KW and I loved it. And it is where entrepreneurs thrive. And I know some of you may not be with KW, but I wanted to just share this with you because um, this to me was one of the largest takeaways that I had in Austin. And I absolutely love it because I do believe that this is the place that entrepreneurs thrive and it has been life-changing for me. And so I wanted to take um, just a couple of minutes. And I want to show you guys this video. It's actually five minutes. If you've seen it, it won't hurt to watch it again. Um, and I just want, want you to just jot down maybe some takeaways that you have or thoughts. And if you're not with KW, it's totally fine um, because you can use this for your business. This video is one of the best marketing videos I have ever seen. So I'm going to play it for you guys. In 2023, Keller Williams turns 40. And sometimes, midlife crisis is a good thing. Now, we aren't going to run out and buy a flashy sports car or a boat or some other toy. And we aren't suddenly going to grow a mustache because we've already got one. But it is time for something big because that's what we do. It's time to tell the world who we really are and why we were called to this. T.S. Eliot said, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. 
We started as a small real estate company with a mission to become so trusted by our clients that we could become their realtor for life. But of course, Gary Keller taught us that to be realtors for life, we had to be more than realtors. We're coaches, therapists, mentors, mind readers, and magicians. We're digital hunters with human touch. Wheelers and dealers who only use our powers for good. We are advocates and shoulders to cry on, friends to lean on, and confidants to trust. Together, we are the keys and the doors to new futures. This is the most important time in our lives, as a company, and simply as people. Your clients are feeling that same thing when they come to you. Their first homes, their final homes, newly married, newly divorced, empty nesters or more on the way. These are the most joyous, terrifying, and hopeful times of all our lives. Because your clients are jumping off cliffs and trusting you to build wings on the way down. We get to feel the thrill of that connection every day, if we do our jobs right. And if we do our jobs right, they aren't jobs at all. It is indeed a calling to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, and lives worth living. To be entrepreneurs. For 40 years, we at Keller Williams have deeply believed that entrepreneurship is the miracle of America. That in America, if you can dream it, you can build it. We're privileged to be in the business of buying and selling the most important and life-changing dream. The dream of owning a home of your own. It's not just an American dream. It's a dream shared around the world. At Keller Williams, we want to continue to earn the right to be the home of the dreamers, the doers, the entrepreneurs, the hundreds of thousands of you who have dreamed and built your own business, and in the process, built ours. We all know everything changes, but we will always champion you, the entrepreneurs who are powered by purpose, by energy and passion, teamwork, trust, and technology, integrity and culture, and trained in the rules of how we would do it but who also have the confidence to bend the rules in ways Gary never dreamed of, but hoped you would. You see, we aren't here to teach you our past or to try and predict your future. We're here to help you create the future. We are reigniting a culture of celebrating entrepreneurial visionaries because real leaders don't create followers. We create more leaders. We are teaching rebellion and inspiring invention your mavericks and world changers, and your relentless creativity, fueled by the competitive drive inside every one of you, will make the real estate models of today look quaint by the time you're finished. Everything we ever did was a risk. We started as a little underdog company and grew to be the largest real estate company in the world. You know what underdogs do when they get big? They look for bigger fights. Look for those fights. We want you to out Gary, Gary. Take risks, take heart, take action. All these things that you are for your clients, the coach, the therapist, and the key to a new future, we will redevote ourselves to being for you. There's a reason we want your name larger than ours on signs. When you look at your clients and think to yourself, it's not about me, it's about them. Well. It's not about us, it's about you. This is the most important time in our lives. You're living in a home built for entrepreneurs to thrive. And true entrepreneurs don't have to wait for doors to open for them. After all, we have our own lockboxes. Welcome home. Okay guys. Uh, I loved that. Absolutely loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Oh, let's see. Shoot. I got my whole PowerPoint down. Um, I would love just really quickly, any thoughts or feedback that anybody wants to unmute and share, or you can type in the chat. Um, I posted mine in the chat as well. I love what he said about real leaders. Don't create followers. They create more leaders. Let's see. Hold on. How do I go? There we go. There we go. Um, feedback, thoughts, 
Any ahas or takeaway? Stephanie Moore, I saw you writing a ton of stuff down. I know you had a takeaway. <laughs> okay, Dana, guilty. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's so many. I mean, I agree. Like, you know, real leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. Um, you know, we're a company of cultural entrepreneurs and visionaries. Um, I like that Keller Williams is like the home of dreamers, doers, and entrepreneurs. Me too. And this is our season that. of thriving. Yeah, I loved that. Thank you for sharing that. You know, one thing too that I thought was so great, um, and I, and then we'll go we'll go on after this. But I loved that they talk about so much how now we as real estate business owners we are more important now than ever, <laughs> and that's why I want you guys to understand um, the industry and the market, and I want you to really be able to share it with your clients because they're looking to you now more than ever. Remember, most of our people now are feeling a lot of uncertainty about our country. They're feeling uncertainty about their financial situation. They're feeling uncertainty about leaders, and I mean, just everything. You name it. They they've lost a lot of faith. And so when they're making one of the most important financial decisions of their life, uh, which is typically buying or selling their home, um, they want an expert. And so we are now more than important, more important than ever. So I want to get into this and I'm going to give you a ton of stats. Um, but I first wanted to share with you something that I learned in my multiple market center uh, OP mastermind. And they said there are three bets for the future. And I, um, I really believe these are true. Number one is increasing power of the consumer. Our consumers are going to have more power than ever. Um, this is why, <laughs> if you can see, I'm holding my phone. Uh, we can find anything and everything. Um, it was, I was laughing. And if you know my sister-in-law, Caitlin, I don't even know if she's on or not, but you know, she's kind of like, a detective. She's so good at finding information <laughs> and they're looking at a house in Charleston and my brother and Caitlin stayed in the car with the baby. And my brother and I were like walking and my mom were walking around the outside of the house and um, looking in and another agent was there showing her clients. And so we were just kind of walking around and we came back in the car and she said, did you know that this listing agent actually lives four doors down and they're the one that owns this such and such pizza place in Mount Pleasant that we like to go to. And I'm like, how did you find all that out in like 15 minutes? And she's like, oh, I just was like looking it up on my phone. And I'm like, of course you did. And that's the, that's the, the, that's a great point to show you of the increasing power of the consumer. They can find stuff before we can find stuff, you guys. So um, the, the consumers, are going to have more power. Number two, rapid integration transactions. Did you know that Amazon is now in 120 million households? True stat. Uh, that was as of July of this year. So they're in 120 million households. Amazon is whether you are, you know, whether you're an Amazon Prime member and you're ordering from Amazon or you have a, a A-L-E-X-A -A in your house, which I can't say because ours is going to start to go nuts because Adam has her like controlling everything in this house. Um, but the reason of that, of the number two is we have to be there, everything moving forward. So it's going to be more important now than ever for you to, and if you're in one of my market centers, we're working on this as fast as we can, but mortgage title insurance, I mean, property management is a huge one. You have to be there, everything. And many of you know this, but they call you when their toilet is clogged and they don't know who to call. They call you when they need a painter and they don't know who to call. But what we need to do is we need to be there everything for everything. So I want you to just think of the Amazon example because we need to be there Amazon. I mean, just like we go to Amazon for everything, when they're thinking real estate or anything that has to do with their home, we need to have a way for them to have rapid integration. And then number three is three bet. The third bet for the future is agent value and relationships. Everyone still believes that it is going to be important for, for consumers to have a belly to belly relationship with an agent excuse me, they want a human being still at, at the, they, they still want someone to pick up the phone and call and they still want a belly to belly relationship. So as a brokerage, I feel confident that we can help you with number one and number two, number three is going to be up to you. Um, and I think that that's just a really great thing for you guys to just, I don't know, maybe star or circle or write down because the more value that you can continue to bring your clients, and I'm going to give you some examples today, the more relevant that you're going to uh, stay and the more market share that you're going to keep. Um, this is a scary thought. And so I wanted to get it out of the way in the very beginning. This is nuts. Um, and when they said this stat, I couldn't believe it. Did you know that every brokerage in the United States right now, you could buy one, if you had the money, 
you could buy every real estate brokerage in the United States for $20 billion. So all of them and what they're worth right now, if you had a cool 20 bill, Josh, you could give us a loan laying around. You, you could buy every brokerage in the United States. Did you know that Rocket Mortgage has $39 billion of cash available on their balance sheet right now? So I was shocked when I heard that. And not that I ever think in a million years that's going to happen. I'm sharing that with you because I just want you to be aware that it is important for us to understand what's happening in our industry. It's important for us to stay relevant. It's important for us to touch our clients and to continue to bring them the value that they need and that they want and the information that they're looking for because our industry is changing. I mean, really, and, and it's continuing to grow more and more and more and change in, a, in, in different ways. So, um, so I'm gonna share with you, I shared this last time, but these are the magic numbers that you need to know. And so I'm gonna share this every time, but it's two, two, four, six. When we have a very perfect economy, Perfect is probably not the right word. Balance. When we have a balanced, good rolling economy, these are our magic numbers. We want GDP to be around 2%. We want inflation to be around 2%. We want to see real estate appreciating at about a 4%. And we want unemployment to stay below 6%. If we can stay at these numbers or close to them, everything is usually running pretty smooth. When those numbers are off or not at those numbers, 2246. Um, I always, when I say that, I always think I'm going to say the wrong number because my cell phone is 2644 and I use those four digits for everything. So I always think, so if I, if I say them wrong, I apologize in advance, but it's 2246. Um, when, when they're not close to that is when we have a problem and things kind of get like out of sorts. Um, and so I'll go through and, and show you some of this, ignore the bottom because um, those have been updated by now. So to run through the market update, these came from Megacamp, so they may be a repeat. However, I know many of you say that Gary goes really fast and it takes you a minute to understand them anyway, so I wanna repeat. So this is just for the United States. So COVID daily cases as of August, 2022, um, so you can see cumulative, This these stats came from the CDC, just FYI, but cumulative cases are at 92 million, cumulative deaths are around a million, 71% um, they're saying 22.2 million have been fully vaccinated, and now they're talking about monkeypox cases, which I don't even honestly know what that means. So um, the as of August, you can see they are going back down a little bit. Obviously, they really spiked um, high at the end of last year, uh, beginning of this year around January, and then we dipped and then we came back up again. So um, this is a seven day moving average of new cases. And that has a lot to do with kind of all of the rest of this. So these are the home sales annual. So um, if you, this is actually very interesting. If you look at the home sales annual, and let me make sure I'm telling you uh, the right thing. So um, we've had multiple years uh, of, of double digits that are unheard of, even with a shift. Um, and so I want to show you right now, in, in 2022, they were projecting we would sell a total of 5.1 million homes. Last year, 2021, 6.1 million sold. Um, they've now dropped this down 5.1. They think it's going to be closer to like 4.8 or 4.9. So most economists and what Gary shared with us is we probably will see about a 15 to 20% decline in 2022 compared to 2021. Um, and we'll talk about the reasons why, but we will see a little bit less. And honestly, we probably will see numbers back closer to like 2012, 2013, 2014 ish, maybe. Um, if we can, if we do end up less than the five, um, less than the five million that we've so, that are sold um, on this next. Oh, I did want to play this for you. It's like 47 seconds, but I wanted to show you really quickly what Gary said about this. So one second, let me give you this, his first. The, the only reason why we go, oh, it's tough is because it wasn't as tough. It was better. But if you look at 5.1 and you go all the way back to, um, 1990, 5.1 looks pretty dead gum good. Yeah. So perspective really matters. And, and so you, we tend to get caught up in this, oh my gosh, it's not as good as it was. But you have to remember that at 5.1, you're anywhere in that range, 
that's plenty of real estate being bought and sold to build fantastic businesses. So I like that because I definitely want you guys to have a little bit of pers oopsie perspective on that as well. Um, it does look, what in the world? Hold on one second. It does, uh, oh, I know, I gotta get out of there. Here we go. Um, it does, oh, oh hold on. Good morning, hold on. good to see you. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's happening. Okay, here we go. Um, it is good to give you perspective. And one other thing I wanted to share with you guys, this was an interesting fact. It's kind of hard to tell on here, but if you can see, Gary wore this shirt that says charge the storm and it has a picture of a bull um, on the shirt. And everybody was like, what is he wearing? Why is there, why are there t-shirts with bulls on them for, or buffalo? I'm sorry, it's a buffalo, not a bull, it's a buffalo. Why are there buffaloes on his shirts? And so he shared with us that buffalo, and I didn't know this, so, but this is what Gary said. So if, it, if it's not true, one of you all, one of you an, animal loving people tell me, Becca, my, probably you, buffaloes are the only animals that actually go and run into a storm. Um, they charge storms because they want to get it over with, fat, I guess, is, is what they shared with us. And so Gary wore this shirt because he said that we need to be thinking of ourselves as buffaloes. Um, oh, Josh, see, yes, I loved it. He said it was the most important for him than thinking about it. I love that. Uh, they're the only animal that actually runs into a storm. And so he said, really, we need to have the mindset of a buffalo and we need to be thinking about actually running into a change and a shift in our industry, um, instead of running away from it. And so I thought that was a really great analogy. So here's home sales monthly. If you want to see them broken down, um, by the month and you can, you can see it's, we've kind of gone up, down, down, down. So 2022 is the turquoise color. So 5.6 in April, 5.4 in May, June, 5.1, 4.8 in July. And then we'll get to see August numbers. Um, here are home prices annually. So in last year, the average home price in the United States sold was 351,000. I mean, you guys can see that's up drastically. Uh, over the last several years. Um, if you look right before the last recession, we were at two, 222,000 average sales price is the median home price. I mean, um, and so they were projecting 395 would be the average home price for 2022. Um, they do believe that that might dip down a little bit more and be closer to the 340. So it'll be close to see if it'll be a little less or a little higher than what it was in 2021. Um, but perspective wise, look back at 1991 when the average home price was 101,000. <laughs> so drastically, drastically different as you can see. Here's the same thing, only monthly, home prices monthly. Um, <clears throat> so in uh, July for the United States, uh, we were right at an average of 404,000. So you can see it's they they crept up really high in June at the highest. I mean, look at that. That's nuts, 414, and then starting to come back down. Um, here is inflation. Let's see. Okay, so remember, oh no, this is inventory. I'm sorry, inventory. Um, here's our month's supply of inventory for this year. And as you can see right now, um, we are right at about three and a half months. So it's actually going up quite a bit. Um, and then here's our average days on the market for July of this year, 14 is the average days on market for um, all of the homes in the United States that have been active. And it's it's been anywhere from 17, 16 down to 14. But if you look back in 2020, uh, January 43, February 36. Um, and so this is something important to pay attention to. Because a lot of you that have never done business or um, weren't licensed, yes, Carrie, absolutely. I'm going to send these out to everybody for sure. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that were not in business in 2007, 2008, well, really even in, in the years following that, it was not uncommon to be at the 60, 90 day mark and be like, okay, like we we haven't had any offers. We need to be talking about doing price reductions. We need to be talking about doing different things to get your home sold. We haven't been in that market whatsoever. And for those of you that have been in that market, you, you will understand how important it is to get back to the, to the days and the conversations and the skill base that you need to have of talking to sellers about price reductions and talking to sellers about, hey, Actually, it was funny because when we were look, we looked at another house um, with Chris and Caitlin, 
And I said, and it's this house had been on the market for a few days, which in Charleston is unheard of. And when we walked through, I said, this is so funny. This is just telling us we're already getting back to like buyers have said enough is enough, which is what Gary has said eventually would happen. And now they're like, well, look, this whole house needs painted. The crawl space needs to be fixed. Like it's been on the market for 14 days. So those of you that are actively showing right now, I would love to hear your feedback in the chat. Do you feel like your buyers are getting a little bit pickier or do you still feel like they're at a place? Yes, some of you are shaking your heads. Yes. Um, or do you still feel like a place where they're like, they don't care what it's like at my experience lately has been they're They're starting to pay more attention to if they're going to what they're going to pay and what the, what the condition looks like. Yeah. Brittany said, yeah, picky and taking their time. Totally. Yeah. It ha it's happened where they've shifted over, um, because they got, they got sick of it. Yeah. Pam said, yes. Yeah. Yes. A little more picky for sure. Yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah, what stuff say they're having higher expectations and strong deal breakers. Totally agree. Yep, totally agree. So mortgage rates uh, annually, this is where perspective really, really, really matters. <laughs> um, Gary's exact words were 2.9% was a gift likely to never be seen again. So we need to make sure that we are arming our buyers, especially with, with um, like annual data when it comes to mortgage rates, because right now all they're hearing is, Rates are raising, rates are so high, rates are so, rates are not high. I mean, people bought, not me, but people bought houses when they were 16, um, you know, and even higher than that. And so I do believe that everyone is correct, that I do think that they will continue to go up before the end of the year. Uh, most people have said, including Gary, don't be surprised if you see eight. Um, I don't, I don't anticipate them going much higher than that. But if you look at the historical average from seven from 1972 to 2021, I think it is, is that right? Um, 7.8 was the average. And then if you look from 90 to 21, 5.97 was the average. So 2.9 was really, truly a gift. This just shows it monthly. This is the sheet I want everybody. This is the one I want you to take a screenshot of. Um, if you're on a Mac, it's shift command three. If you aren't on a Mac, I don't know how to help you. I'm really sorry. But um, this is the one that everybody needs to be using. I sent this in an email last, no, today. I sent this in an email today with a reminder and with the Gene Rivers recording. Many of you have asked for this. You 100% should be using this in your touches to your buyers for sure. I would have this. I know you guys think I'm a freak that I laminate everything, but I would have, I have this printed and laminated. I would laminate this and keep this with you um, and have this when you're writing offers or when you're working with buyers, even for your sellers too, because they're saying, yes, thank you, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when you, uh, when they're hearing about the rates, this is really great perspective to show them like, Hey, this is not the highest rates have ever been. And people, this is actually still good. Like fives are okay. I don't know. Does anybody know what the rates are today? Um, I don't know, but somebody will probably know and can put it in the chat. But they're not, they're not terrible, right? Six. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Um, and they've definitely been much higher. And remember, you have all the Ds, like the four, the five, or the six Ds, whichever one you want to, to recall of people that are still going to be are still going to be transacting in real estate. They're they're dying. They're, you know, whatever all of those are, death, divorce, drugs, all that. So here are a couple more stats on the economy. So remember GDP, we want it to be at two is a pretty deep diapers. Yes, thanks, Scott, diapers. Yes, babies being born. Um, we want it to be around 2%. And as you can see in 2021, our um, gross domestic product was at 5.7%, which was crazy high, crazy, crazy high. Remember what they say quarterly. Um, we, I'm sure you guys know this, but our um, government just deemed us in an official recession because the definition of a recession is when you have two quarters in a row of negative GDP. So we had Q1 and then we had Q2. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where Q3 uh, shakes out. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be negative too. Um, but you can't, the government will not say that we're in a recession until we have two quarters of negative GDP, which we just had. But many of you know that we've been talking about a, a shift or a recession since last year, because in real estate, we tend to feel it first. We actually are usually one of the first that feel it, um, because we can tell by the way that our clients are, are, are acting. Um, consumer sentiment, this is nuts to me, but consumers are still at a very uh, low 
uh, all time low of, of their trust in purchases and how they spend their money. Um, they didn't stop spending money. People are still going on vacation, remodeling their kitchens and, you know, buying new cars and doing all the things. However, they, their trust is lower. And so they're doing more research than they ever have before. Um, they're comparing more, they're, they're, you know, I think most of them, especially, um, I'm going to say this every time now, cause I just have to give uh, Abby crap about it, but us geriatric millennials, which are the ones that are in the 80, 81 to 82 to 83 born range, <laughs> we're considered geriatric millennials now, um, are, are basing purchases off of reviews. They're definitely looking more and more because the trust is not there. And then um, unemployment, let's see, uh, 2022 um, is the lowest number on the chart let's see 2022 yeah here we go this is the one I was trying to get to you get you to um this is unemployment monthly so if you go back to oh let's see do I have it on here yeah here we go okay the yellow line shows shows the unemployment rate and and it also shows job openings so this has been interesting to me because our unemployment it has not been low but I don't know if many of you feel like this, but I try to go eat places and there's like signs on the door that says closed because we're short staffed <laughs> or we were closed early today. So it's been a little bit interesting to see how that works. Um, but uh, Gary said on this um, average unemployment is right around 4 million and we are at 12 projected 12 million right now. Um, so just to give you a little bit on that, which also this is crazy too, because Americans have more cash in their checking accounts than they've ever had in the history of the United States this year. So in the history of as long as they've tracked it, they've never had as much cash as what they have in their checking accounts this year. So a lot of that they say is two reasons. One, they've received some sort of grant or stimulus or loan or money or something during COVID. And then two, people really weren't spending because they weren't leaving their homes during the pandemic. Um, so both of those combined together are reasons why most people have more cash than they ever have had before. Inflation, remember our target is 2%. So we really want to see about 2% um, inflation. That's, that's like our, that's our, that's where we want to be. That's the target. That's the purple line. So CPI actually includes energy and food. And then your core CPI does not include energy and food because those are big ones. But as you can see, um, including we inflation is at seven or was at 7%. Um, and then without is at 5.5. So still significantly higher than the two that we want to see. I don't know if you guys are feeling this still, but I still feel like everything is outrageous. I can't go to Whole Foods and not spend like 600 bucks. So it just seems like stuff is still continuing to be higher and higher um, than what it was before. Gary said with inflation, um, we're actually in unprecedented times. Uh, things just feel more expensive, which just pisses people off, <laughs> to be honest, in general. <laughs> They're mad that they have to spend, Gary's words, not Dana's words, even though I probably would say the same thing. Um, they just are mad that they have to spend more money. Even if you have it, you're still mad that, you, that you're having to spend more money. Uh, they think 2024 will be the prediction of things getting back to normal. So all of the stats show, and you can see that here on this graph, um, they they believe that it'll continue to go down and next year it'll continue to go down. We'll still feel like things are expensive next year, but and a lot of that will depend on gas prices. Honestly, that's a huge piece of it. When Americans see gas go up, they are even more pissed in general. <laughs> so gas prices have a lot to do with it, um, but projected they believe 2024 will be when we'll get back closer to the 2% that we actually want to see. And Gary said they will raise rates until this is fixed. Um, the problem is fixed, I mean. So that's why we will continue to see rates go up. But if you look, we haven't seen anything this high since, oh, it's not on this one. Let's see. Uh, nope. Well, we haven't seen, it doesn't go back, but we haven't seen inflation this high since 1975. The last time that it was over 7% was 1975, which is insane. I mean, that's nuts you know, so um, there's inflation monthly. So construction, I know many of you guys sell a lot of new construction and this has always been something that we've been very into as well. So I like to look at this, the historical average on construction, new homes are about a million a year. 
um, are sold. You can see back in 05, 06, uh, right in 07, right before everything tanked, <laughs> we were way, we were not way, but we were above the thousand mark and then everything kind of went down. Um, and then since then, it's been building back up. 2021 was one of the best years we've seen um, since the last recession of new construction homes. A lot of that, I, I believe this is just like a, a Dana thought is because a lot of buyers were sick of not being able to find what they wanted. So they just gave up and said, we'll build. And many of you, I know, experienced that because I've talked to you about it. Um, but I think that's why. And then so 2022 is still projected to be right um, a little bit higher uh, than what the average is. Um, a little over a million, but maybe not as much as last year. And that one reason is because um, they're gonna they're gonna tighten construction loans for people to be able to borrow because lending is tightening right now. The last time this happened, you saw a lot of builders go out of business during those years. During those um, either one because they had way too much inventory and they couldn't sustain it, or two because they tightened the lending criteria so hard that they weren't able to get as many construction loans. And so they all, unless they could go get hard money or find a backer, they they got out, they stopped building, they got out of the business. Um, however, lumber prices are lower, are continuing to lower, which is a good thing um, for us, not for Heather's husband, if she if she's on, but um, but for for most people, it's a good thing. Um, and so as, as the price of lumber continues to go down a little bit, that will, that will help also. And then here is the builder confidence, uh, graph that I also really like. So you can see it is down, um, a little bit, not a ton, um, compared to what it was. Well, no, I guess it is. It's no, it's not half. Um, but it's, it's down a little bit. And, um, and so this is just people's confidence in building in, in general, so in conclusion, I want to share with you a couple of things for your actual business and some tactical things. So what you guys really need to be focusing on are know your sales stats. Number one, you need to know your numbers. And if you missed the, the Zoom with Jane Rivers, you should go back and watch that because we talked about that and you definitely need to know your numbers, but you need to know your market stats. Um, we have a monthly Zoom every month with Troy Marsh. And so if you have been on those, then you understand and know that. Um, if you haven't, you should hop on because I don't know anybody better to teach you how to know your own market stats than Troy. He's amazing. And he does that every single month and he's committed to do that. Um, oh yes. Thank you, Scott. Um, it is the Gene Rivers episode. Also, we dropped that on our podcast. Um, is that today? Yes. Today, Tuesday. Uh, so on everything life and real estate on Linda and I's podcast, we re-ran the Gene um, training this morning because it just was so good, honestly. Um, but you need to know your market stats. You need to like, I mean, those of you, I know some of you do this, but like, I'm talking every morning, you should be looking at the stats. You should really know in your local area, how many actives came on, how many went under contract, how many have, um, expired, how many have had price reductions? Like what is the average days on the market? And then you need to be familiar with our nation stats as well. Um, you need to, I showed this last time I'm reshowing it. You need to get serious about telling your story and be making yourself be the local expert. Um, I know you guys are going to like, I'm glad we're on zoom. So you can't throw things at me, but I know you're not going to like this, but video is the quickest and fastest and best way to do it. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to challenge some of you that, uh, that don't like to do video or are not doing video to think about stepping out of your comfort zone sometime in the next super near future, like yesterday and get into doing some videos because I can promise you, I see people that have, it's none of these, neither of these guys, these guys are amazing. Um, Scott and Ken Posek, but, um, I see people that I don't think are really experts, but they look like it on their social media. Remember that whole perception thing, perception is reality. Um, and there's no quicker way for you guys to be able to become your local market expert than to start doing videos on these things. Next is I wanna give you three tactical models that we got at Mega Camp that I believe are awesome. You are welcome to take screenshots of these and I'll also send them in the, in the email follow-up too. Um, the first one is a guy named Jay and this is his process for audience building with newsletters. This is amazing. And there is no quicker way to be able to become a local market expert than to do newsletters. I had, oh man, let me see if I can find it. I got some crazy stats on newsletters that I wanted to, yes, 4 billion email addresses are active in the world today, which is nuts. 
um, people are still opening emails. So emails are still working. Um, and actually right now, this shocked me. If you are running emails, the number one thing you need to look at is your open rate. Um, I still use MailChimp for all the emails. If you guys get my emails, every one of them are from MailChimp because I, be I believe they're very correct and easy to track your open rates. 25% um, open rate is the new benchmark for the real estate industry. So you, which it's up, it used to, you guys, it used to be like seven and 8% open rate was good. So 25% is the new benchmark. Um, I don't remember where the stat was from, but they said it on stage. And if it wasn't right, I don't think they would have said it. But so 25% is the new open rate benchmark for our industry. And then get this email converts 50 times more than social media does now, as far as actually clicking or responding or like signing up to want to work with you. So they're going to respond to your email 50 times more than they are your social media. Now, that does not mean stop your social media. <clears throat> like that's social media is still the best and number one way of Tomo, uh, top of mind awareness, 100%. But emails are converting quicker and more. So I want to share with you this. This um, this is Jay Papazan's uh, newsletter. My open rates are around 48%. And I felt super good about them until I heard Jay get on stage and he said his was 78, I think. So I'm like, oh, I got to catch up to you. So he said, number one, choose your audience. Who do you want to attract? Number two, select your topics. What information does this audience need or want? Right now, people want and need the information that I'm giving to you guys, which is they want to know what the heck is happening in our world. They want to know what's happening in the economy. They want to know what's happening in real estate. Um, you know, we hear this stuff every day and they don't. And they want to know, is it truly a horrible time to buy or is it a great time to buy? Like they, they want to know that. Pick your frequency. Um, does your audience's topics need to be updated daily, bi-weekly, weekly, monthly, and then assign the work? Who will write it? Who will design it? Who will manage distribution and who will grow it? If you're a one-man show or lady show, I would say um, use MailChimp. It is so easy, you guys. Once you get one template, you can just roll from there. And then after that, you just build your tech stack. You want to send them to a landing page. You can run your Google Analytics. Um, your email platform, is it MailChimp, is it um, ConvertKit, Constant Contact, and then you always want to have in your URLs and social handles, and then your logos and graphics, just, I mean, you can use Canva, you can use commands, but you, I still use Canva for most of that stuff, so this is a very simple model, and I would encourage you, if you are not consistently sending email updates um, with, with economy um information and industry updates, I would encourage you that would be one tactical way to, to start right now. The second model um, is from Troy Williams. He's a mega agent as well. This is his SOI model. Um, he said this enables him to control 25% of his sales. So number one is you want to pick the niche area that you want to dominate and articulate your value to. This could be your neighborhood. This could be your sphere. This could be, um, you know, whoever. Uh, he, I love this. And I wanted to share this with you because Troy said he wanted to become the Google for his entire small one zip code town. So could it be your zip code? And then do you want to be the local economist? Can you send them a vendor list? You want to be the real estate expert? Like, what is it um, that you can convey to them and then fill your database, make a list of everyone that knows you and that um, likes likes you, is that what that says? Knows you and that you know and like, I'm sorry. Input list into command or whatever your other CRM is. And then communicate with your database one-to-one -one at least four times per year per person. So choose your favorite communication method um, and then just consistently touch your database. If you guys can do this and you can throw in becoming the local market expert and some stats, that's it's going to work. Communicate with your database one-to-many. Um, and this would be the ones that you might just start sending newsletters to. Here's what he said he does with his community newsletter. It's two pages. It includes local events that appeal to everyone a comedy corner, which is like a funny cartoon or a joke. And then number three, a ask Troy section where people can ask anything. Example, is now a good time to buy? How do I declutter before selling my home? I love that idea. I think that ask you is like one of the cutest things ever. And I think that'd be cool to do on your social media too. And then lastly, be an amazing consumer advocate. Answer your phone, be professional and go above and beyond for everyone. Um, so I love this model. I think this is a great one. And then this is the last last one. This is Kenny Klaus's realtor farming route. And for those of you that are farming or that are wanting to get into farming, 
that has a lot to do with knowing the industry and knowing your market as well. So he said that his fundamental belief is when you have a route, you get to know the people and the area better than anyone else. The rule is run the route every day and get into the flow of the community. And that is so true. And then the system is just planting seeds consistently over time, builds a consistent business. So start a newsletter targeted to a specific area or zip code. Can you guys see how many, oopsie, how many of these agents, I mean, I'm telling you, newsletters are, it's a huge deal right now. Start a newsletter targeted to a specific area or zip code, add value to the relationship, market knowledge, community information, feature local businesses, give a coupon, um, have handouts for your newsletter and the businesses that are in the community. Wear my uniform inside the community, which would be your logo, like logoed out, your swag. Run events, have drives for giving. So let people remember, everybody wants to be a part of something. They want to make a difference. They want to be a part of doing something bigger. Hold open houses regularly in your farm. Be authentic and connect with people. Um, one of his big things is handwritten notes, which I know many of you are still doing and I think are it's amazing. Uh, reinvest in the business example ha have a moving truck frequently used equipment um oh shoot who is it you guys somebody in our richmond office bought like a pressure washer or something i think i'm trying to think might have been mike and amber i don't know if anybody remembers this but um one of somebody in our kentucky office like they bought some equipment and they they let their farm use it like their clients they put it on their facebook group and they're like if anybody needs a pressure washer i have it and of course it has like a sticker with their logo on it i'm sure but it's just a way to reinvest in the business and to give value back. Put down roots, of course, own real estate in your farm and then build trust in your brand and just continuing to do that. Here's a couple examples of um, his newsletters that he sends and things that they give, uh, tips that they give and um, all those types of things. But I truly believe if you can figure out, even if you just use one of these models, I mean, start with something and just get consistent with it. If those of you that are in our concierge program, you're, we're doing the newsletters for you. So I know that they're, I know that they're working because um, I hear you guys. So be the local expert and take market share in the shift is really what I want you guys to hear from today. And just knowing this stuff is what is so important. Being able to, um, I don't expect you to like memorize every slide, but you could print those slides out and again, have them in a folder, laminate them, like keep them in a notebook and just have them handy. Gary said that it, it, all he did when he started selling real estate was just always, he had a box and it was his prop box, he said, and it was full of prop propaganda. Is that the right word? Yeah. And he said he always just used that stuff. And whenever he was in appointments, he kept it in his car and he would be like, you know what? Let me actually, if you have a question on that, let me show you. I have the stat to show you. And it was just how he continued to become the expert over and over and over again. And if you can do that, I know some of you will, those of you that will, you're going to be the ones that are going to take market share as we go into a shift. Um, and those agents that will are going to be the ones that take market share from the ones that don't, um, not to not to be negative, but it's just the reality. So any questions you guys have, type them in the chat. And then before we end, I just want to remind you, oh, I did, I did good on time today. I just want to remind you that next Friday, I have my live interview with Damon West. And I, um, I'm going to be sending an email out about this one day here soon in the next day or two. But if you guys want to take like your top 20 VIP clients, invite them to this. You're more than welcome to invite clients to this. I think it would be an awesome idea of a way for you to give them value. It has nothing to do with real estate. It has everything to do um, with personal growth and being a good human and having grit. You should just just YouTube Damon West and you can hear his story. He was um, an amazing athlete and came from a great family in Texas and he um, got on the wrong track and got into drugs and started breaking into people's homes. And he was um, arrested and sentenced to life in prison. They wanted to make an example out of him. And after seven years, um, because of really great behavior and the things that he did inside of the prison, he got released. And he has said every day since then that he will spend his life um, helping people just and be inspired and, and helping them overcome things. He just spoke for um, Nick Saban's uh, football team in Alabama. And right before that, last two weeks ago, he was speaking to the Clemson Tigers for Dabo Sweeney. I mean, he's, he travels every day. Um, and we were very, very blessed to get him to do a virtual interview with us. So I'll be sending that information to you guys, but everyone is welcome to attend. I would love to show him like 
a really great audience uh, on here too. So please put that on your calendar. It's next Friday, September 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, if you guys need anything, have any questions, was this helpful? I feel like I went really fast. Sorry. Okay, good. Good deal. Anything you guys need, um, just let me know. And anything else you guys would like to hear or you're wanting to learn about. Um... <laughs> thank you, Cindy. I'm working from home today, so I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, awesome. Okay, guys. Love it. Thanks for being here. Go have a great rest of your week. Thanks for being on. See you later. Go take market share. Yes, I'll send the slides. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, guys.